This is a story about my son and his passion for birds and his frustration with the educational system. When Scott was as little as two years old, he used to joke and point to the red robins and say, little big belly. <laughs> Growing up as a high desert museum camper, he knew just what to do with this owl pellet. Dissected, of course, to see what the owl had eaten. Scott learns best through discovery experience, working with his hands, cramming information out of a book, not his forte. For these reasons, he could not wait to become a teen volunteer at the High Desert Museum. In the dark days of middle school, <laughs> his light began to shine. That nameplate was his favorite part of this outfit. With a smile on his face and a skip in his step, Scott did anything that the museum asked him to do. He was a camp counselor, he washed a lot of dishes, and he asked many visitors to please stop defacing the property. But he always wanted to work with the birds of prey, and they gave him a chance. Hey, Scott, let's see what you got. Come clean up this poop, cut up these diets, and you got to haul a lot of heavy gravel. And he did. He rolled up his sleeves, and he got to work. And they rewarded him. This is William, the screech owl, the first bird that Scott was trained to hold. Excited for more, he went back and cleaned up more poop and cut up more diets. <laughs> and at this point, they trained him to deliver the bird talk and to hold Mackenzie, the great horned owl. Summers at the High Desert Museum feature the Raptors of the Desert Sky flight show. And you'll see a perch in the background that Scott most likely helped to install. He helped train the birds, and you'll see in the bottom corner he's wearing a headset and he's helping to man the show. I guarantee you that Scott worked really hard the morning that he had this opportunity to train Bonnie. You could see how Bonnie digs badger style in the Desert Dweller show. There have been a number of times where I've picked up my son after a long day of work and he'd have a tender sound in his voice and he'd say, Mom, I can't believe how much they trust me at the museum. Now, why can't taking out the trash be this much fun at home? <laughs> <laughs> and the rewards keep coming. Here we have Dart the Kestrel, whom Scott helped train. All of the birds at the museum have their own story as to why they're unable to live in the wild. The museum takes amazing care of these animals. They use them for educational purposes, always trying to make sure that they never overstress the animal. Very valuable lessons that Scott absorbs. As you know, Scott loves working with his hands. So learning how to make this handmade falconry equipment was right up his alley. Roof and paint this building? Yes. <laughs> and of course, all these lessons come home. On Christmas Eve, we had a little struggling crossbill on our back deck. Scott actually stuck his finger out. The bird hopped on. He brought him in for the night, gave him some food and water, and released him on Christmas morning. And who's to say that math has to be taught from a book in a classroom? These guys are weighed regularly and fed very proportionate amounts of food. And speaking about school, when worlds collide, I can't even imagine what was going through Scott's head here, delivering his passion in a place that drains his passion and doing it all in front of his peers. <laughs> Rain or shine, the work must be done, but somehow work at the High Desert Museum is both rewarding and fun. And of course, there's always time to fall in love. Here we have Roxy, who actually fell asleep on Scott's glove during one of the bird talks. My husband and I, we just cannot thank the museum enough for giving this experience to our son. He's really come into his physical power. He's developed deep confidence. But the most important thing, he has a time and place to experience his passion. Go, Scott. <laughs>